Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, sir. How can I help you? That was a magnificent dessert you served us tonight. I wanted to tell you personally how much both Monsieur Bouc and I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, sir. In fact, it is so good. Monsieur Bouc insists on knowing how you made it. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. You must know a chef never gives away their recipes. But, well, you helped with the refrigerator, and without space in it for me, there would have been no dessert. Very well. To prepare tonight's dessert, first I melt sugar to make caramel. Then I spread this caramel to make tuile. Between two tuiles, I add a small scoop of lemon ice cream, and I put the whole thing on a strawberry crown. Poirot, you are suspicious even now. The pastry chef gave up her prized recipe a little too easily. I sense she wasn't entirely honest with me. She is lying, but why? Oh, the truth cannot hide from Poirot forever. Thank you for sharing your recipe with me, but I doubt those are strawberries you're using. Oops. You have a good eye, Monsieur Poirot. Very well. What fruit do you think I used? You used raspberries, not strawberries. I'm not fooled. You're right. Mr. Book, he couldn't tell the difference. Let's move on to the bottom part of the dessert. My favorite part of the dessert. First, I melted some butter. I crumbled pieces of chocolate into the butter. Finally, I let the whole thing cool down to let it harden. somewhere to prove she's lying. It's certainly not chocolate that you've crumbled. I see you do have an excellent palate. Do you know what ingredients I used? A clever pastry chef might mix crushed biscuits with butter to create this delicious base. That's it. You're getting closer to the entire recipe. Closer? <laughs> I've caught murderers with less difficulty than this. I'll give you one last challenge. I'm sure you will be able to figure out the order I mix my ingredients in. If you can, you will have earned my recipe. Mademoiselle, solving the murder of Roger Ackroyd was easier than this. Yes, sir.
This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. As promised, my recipe is yours. Give me five minutes to write it down for you. Thank you. I am in your debt. I can take advantage of this moment to resume my little observations of the passengers. Did you enjoy the meal? I'm not used to meals like this. You do not have good restaurants in Kenya? Actually, we do. This is in the 1930s. I did not mean to offend. You didn't like the meal? The lobster, it was undercooked, and the potatoes were too dry. I expect, being Princess Dragomirov's assistant, you must be used to eating well. Cooking is an art. You do not need to wear the chef's hat to be an artist. What is your favorite dish? Curry roast. It is a specialty of mine. Must admit I'm not right this time. No, 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 not good. Et voilà. I made a lot of progress on the expenses last night, sir. I should be done by tomorrow morning. You're supposed to be a fast worker, Hector. Sorry, sir. Working here is not as comfortable as in our office in Boston. You're lucky to ride in a train like this. I think that's the right answer. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. I must admit I'm not right this time. That's the right answer. Here you are, sir. My recipe. Please tell Mr. Book he should not expect my recipes for the other desserts. Thank you very much, mademoiselle. I know he will sincerely appreciate the gesture, and I will make certain he gets the message. In such a long time. It proved more challenging than I expected. This is wonderful. Did it require the use of your little gray cells? More the exercise of my little taste buds. Thank you so much, my friend. Eat your dessert. You've earned it. Good evening. My name is Ratchet. I think that I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Hercule Poirot, is that so? You have been correctly informed, monsieur. Your exploits are well known on my side of the Atlantic. In my country, we come to the point quickly. Mr. Poirot, I want you to take on a job for me. 
Are you interested in earning a lot of money? My clientele, monsieur, is limited nowadays. I undertake very few cases. Why, naturally. I understand that. But this, Mr. Poirot, means big money. Big money. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. What is it you wish me to do for you, Monsieur uh, Ratchet? Mr. Poirot, I am a rich man. A very rich man. Men in that position have enemies. I have an enemy. Monsieur, in my experience, when a man is in a position to have, as you say, enemies, then it does not usually resolve itself into one enemy only. Yes, I appreciate that point. Enemy or enemies, it doesn't matter. What does matter is my safety. My life has been threatened, Mr. Poirot. Now, I'm a man who can take pretty good care of himself. But as I look at it, a little insurance wouldn't hurt. And remember, big money. I regret, Monsieur, that I cannot oblige you. What's wrong with my proposition? If you will forgive me for being personal, I do not like your face, Mr. Ratchet. Oh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to finish my coffee peacefully. Another delightful trophy for my collection. A nightcap, Monsieur Poirot? A cup of coffee, Monsieur Fauché. Then I will retire to my new compartment. I am sure you will find it to be most comfortable. We have stopped? Yes, sir. Belgrad Station. If you'd like to go out and get some fresh air, now is the time. The train leaves at 9.15. No, no, I see that it is snowing. I will not seek out the fresh air. Probably a wise decision. May I suggest a chocolate to accompany your coffee? It is produced by my father, the best chocolatier in Switzerland. I would never refuse a chocolate with such high recommendation. I know you will enjoy it, and please let me know if there is anything else you require. I must admit I'm not right this time. That's the right answer. 
Everything was perfect. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Is there anything you require, monsieur? No, merci. Why, I thought you'd left us. You said you were getting off at Belgrade. You misunderstood me. But, man, your baggage, it's gone. It has been moved into another compartment, that is all. Oh, I see. I wish you a good night, Monsieur Poirot. Good night. I hope you'll sleep well and that your head will be better in the morning. It is just the cold. I'm now making myself a cup of tea. I hope it'll warm you up. I hope so. Good night. Well, good night, my dear. What a brave girl. On the other hand, that man there in the next cabin, Monsieur Ratchet, he scares the hell out of me. There's something wrong about that man. My daughter always says I'm very intuitive. When Mama gets a hunch, she's dead right. That's what my daughter says. And I've got a hunch about that man. He's next door to me, and I don't like it. I put my bags against the communicating door last night. <laughs> I thought I heard him trying the handle. Well, whoever you are, I'm going right to bed to read. Good night. Good night, madam. Whoever I am. Monsieur Ratchet seems very upset. Tired detective. Monsieur Ratchet? Ce n'est rien, je me suis trompé. Good night, madame.
The American lady? Yes, don't worry. You'll know how Mrs. Hubbard is. Imagine to yourself the time I have had with her. She insists, but insists that there is a man in her compartment. Just imagine it, monsieur. In a space of this size, where would he conceal himself? I argue with her. I point out that it is impossible. She insists. She woke up and there was a man there. And how, I ask, did he get out and leave the door bolted behind him? But she will not listen to reason. Hmm. That one does not leave time to listen. The train has stopped, Mr. Michel. We have run into a snowdrift. Heaven knows how long we shall be here. I remember once being snowed in for seven days. Where are we? Between Vinkovsky and Brod. Oh la la. It's time for me to go back to bed. I wish you a good night, monsieur. Or what is left of it. The train is still stuck and the snow continues to fall. I should have taken an airplane. Well, I must make the best of it and join the other passengers for breakfast. The train still hasn't left. The moustache comb to tame unruly nuts. The finest of curling irons for the moustache. Wax to preserve the perfect symmetry of the moustache. Good morning, Monsieur Michel. Good morning, sir. Please enjoy our special breakfast in our restaurant. Good morning, Monsieur Michel. Good morning, sir. This delay is intolerable. I am supposed to be demonstrating the Firenze in Paris in two days. Huh. Electric car. Yes, that's bad luck. Bad luck? If I miss that demonstration, I'll be in a deep trouble. Just text your people in Paris and warn them. Of course I tried that. But there is no network service in these mountains. My daughter said it would be the easiest way in the world. Just sit on the train until I got to Paris. And now we may be here for days and my boat sails the day after tomorrow. How am I going to catch it now? I can't even send an email to cancel it. Ugh, I'm just too mad to talk about it. My colleagues were to meet me in Paris. They will wonder what has happened to me. I can get no words to them. What will they think? We have refugees to help. Good morning, madam. The snow is a predicament, is it not? I am Russian. Snow is no stranger to me. 
Ah, the accent. Would it be St. Petersburg? You are very perceptive. Monsieur Poirot, is it not? And may I take it I have the honor of addressing Princess Natalia Dragomirov. We dispense with the old titles these days. My husband, all of my past, was taken from me by these Stalinists. When they were gone, I became director of the St. Petersburg Museum of Antiquities to restore and preserve what I can of my country's history. Still, the delay must be vexing. If I must be late for my appointments, then they will wait. I know that I would certainly wait, madame. It has been my extreme pleasure to make your acquaintance, madame. Au revoir, Monsieur Poirot. A beautiful piano. What a luxury. Pity there's no one to play it. Mademoiselle, you are not concerned about the train stopping? What can one do? Indeed, this does not make the train move. You have great strength to remain calm at a time like this. I know one far, far stronger than I. And that is? Well, that old lady, for instance. You have probably noticed her. She just has to lift her little finger and ask for something in a polite voice, and the whole train runs. It runs also for my friend Monsieur Bouc. But that is because he is a director of the line, not because he has a masterful character. You don't have to have a strong will when you have power. But I suspect I did not need to tell you that, Mr... Poirot. Mr. Poirot. Good morning, Mr. Fauché. You have early customers, I see. Yes, I am stuck serving here as well at breakfast. Everyone is impatient. They keep complaining that the train is not moving. As if I could get out and push it. It's too early for me to order a boxcar. That is the appropriate drink, I believe. A gin, triple sec, lemon and grenadine mix. A drink for a train indeed. But not perhaps for my breakfast. I think I will settle for an omelette. Good luck, sir. Miss Nielsen is helping to serve in the dining car. How long are we expected to be stranded here? It won't do much good complaining to me. That fellow there with the moustache, he may know something. Excusez-moi, sir. Yes? Monsieur Bouc asks for you to join him in compartment 203. Uh, look here, Poirot. Can you tell us anything? I can tell you the snow, it will not move aside on its own. Of course, but you obviously have some influence with Book. I am going to see him now. I will ask him if he has any information. We have need of you. What has occurred? A passenger lies dead in his bed. Stabbed. A passenger? Which passenger? In there. He's an American. A man called Ratchet. It was his valet masterman who was worried that Mr. Ratchet was not awake yet. Pierre Michel, the conductor, decided to break in and found the body. I see. Well, my friend, I think it is best not to touch anything and wait for the police to arrive. Oh, I tried to call the police, but there is no cell tower for many kilometers. We could be stuck in the snow for hours. The murderer is with us. On the train, now! The sooner we catch him, the sooner we'll be out of danger. The Dr. Constantine is already examining the body. Mon ami, this is not a missing train ticket. We must follow procedure. We must wait for the police to secure the crime scene. Please, Poirot. I will take full responsibility. Book, you ask. Well, if we cannot contact the outside world, then... Oh, 
you are going to drive me crazy. In truth, this problem intrigues me. I was reflecting not half an hour ago that many hours of boredom lay ahead whilst we are stuck here. And now, a problem lies ready to my hand. You accept then? C'est entendu. You place the matter in my hands. Mr. Poirot, I am Dr. Constantine. Forgive me, Doctor. You are a medical examiner? No, but I have assisted in post-mortems at Nairobi Hospital, where I am a teaching fellow. I am familiar with your excellent institution. I do not intend to perform a full autopsy, but a preliminary examination should be of some use. Of course. May I have a look? Then we can compare notes. Please. If you need any help, I won't be far away. I do not think that's the right answer. Et voilà. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Where can the killer have gone? The chain lock is broken. Monsieur Michel told me that he broke the chain on the door to get into the room. The watch is broken, the hands are stopped at 1.15 a.m. One would expect that to be the time when the attack occurred. As you see, the victim has been stabbed many times. Several alone would have been fatal. Yes, I agree. An attack most savage. I will, of course, prepare a complete report on my findings. Thank you. I'll take photos. Did it belong to a ratchet? I'm sure I will find some interesting things inside. This phone was deliberately smashed. Last night, Monsieur Ratchet said he takes precautions. I see now what he meant. He knew he was in danger and wanted to be ready. Yet it was no use to him. I will leave it here for the police. A handkerchief. There's a letter H embroidered on it. falling only lightly this morning, the murderer would have left tracks in the snow if he had jumped out the window. A 
a box of sleeping pills. I wonder what could be in this photo. Expensive clothing, recently laundered. This door communicates with compartment 204. The latch is open on this side. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. No, 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 not good. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. So, the murderer must have exited through Madame Hubert's room. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. I must admit I'm not right this time. That's the right answer.
I'm sorry, Doctor, but I must question you. Of course. I must be considered under suspicion like everyone else. May I know your movements last night? I share compartment 101 with Mr. Book. He would not stop talking about his beloved train. I listened to him for hours talking about his Orient Express. My friend Book will no doubt confirm this. Did you know the victim? Not at all. I noticed him last night at dinner, but I did not pay much attention. Did you touch anything in here this morning? I checked for a pulse. There was none. Rigor mortis had commenced. The body was cool to the touch. I touched nothing else. What can you tell me about the victim? He died from multiple stab wounds of varying angles and depth. More than one would have been fatal. I would place the time of death roughly between midnight and 2 a.m. With more time, I hope I can be more precise. I assume the open window complicates matters. Indeed. Conditions are not perfect. Oh, Daisy. Hmm, interesting. That was easy. Not very surprising. Ah, a meeting place on the back of a postcard. Someone with the initials A. W. Ratchet had an appointment he will never keep.
This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. I do not think that's the right answer. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. I can't imagine Ratchet taking a sleeping pill if he feared for his life. My little grey cells did not let me down. No, 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 not good. I do not think that's the right answer. My little grey cells did not let me down. I think I've seen everything I need at the moment. I am counting on you to finish your analysis. I'll have a more detailed report for you as soon as I can. The chain lock is Monsieur Michel. So, Poirot, did you find anything out? It's a bit early for the handcuffs, my friend. Even for Hercule Poirot. Do not worry, mon ami. I believe our culprit has no plans to strike again. Monsieur Ratchet was the target. Of that I am convinced. Tell me, Book, how did you spend last night? This is a joke, I hope. Don't you trust your old friend? My friend, calm yourself. I must hear your story in order to corroborate other accounts. Ah, naturally. Let me see. Hmm. I went to my compartment after dinner. Uh, Dr. Constantine was already there. We talked about his career. He's a Cambridge man, you know. After university, he returned to his country and has done much good there. He was so interested in the Orient Express. I told him all the anecdotes I know. I'm not certain when we fell asleep, but it was very late. Here is what I have found out. Monsieur Ratchet was stabbed many times. I also found threatening letters in his safe. He had a loaded gun under his pillow, so he was on guard ready to defend himself. However, there was an empty glass with white residue at the bottom. I suspect a barbiturate. Perhaps he was forced to take it. In any case, I am certain he was unconscious, unable to defend himself. I also found several other items at the crime scene, possibly related to the murder. They must be investigated. By all means, Poirot. As fast as you can. I also found liquid for an electronic cigarette but I could not find a vape. This might belong to the murderer. This criminal is an amateur. I need a list of the passengers with their compartment numbers. Pierre Michel will have it. I must interview the rest of the passengers and the staff. I'll be in the bar car if you need me. We are hours late. Soon I hope help will arrive. Good morning, madam. I am Hercule Poirot. Caroline Hubbard. What can I do for you, Mr. Poirot? I am the bearer of unfortunate news. It's obvious with all the commotion that something has happened. Madame Hubbard, I am afraid your neighbor, Monsieur Ratchet, was murdered last night. <gasps> oh my god! I knew it! I knew it! I would like to ask you some questions, but first, may I inspect your room? Of course, yes, you must. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. No, 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 not good. 
think, Poirot, that is not... I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Here is a jacket button. It bears the logo of the Orient Express. The luxury of the Orient Express is present in every detail. This door connects to Monsieur Ratchet's compartment. It was latched on this side. Another golden moustache to treasure. Madame, please tell me about last night. The murderer was right here in my compartment. I woke up. All in the dark it was. I was just so scared I couldn't scream. I pressed the call button. I pressed and pressed. I heard footsteps running in the corridor, then a knock on my door. Come in, I screamed. And I switched on the lights at the same time. And would you believe it? There wasn't a soul there. You think he went back into the other compartment? How do I know where he went? I had my eyes shut tight. The conductor came in. I told the man what had happened. And he didn't seem to believe me. I asked him to search the room, but he found nothing. I told the conductor to look at the door between the compartments. And sure enough, it wasn't bolted. Well, I soon saw to that. I told him to bolt it, then and there. How is it you didn't bolt the door between the two compartments? But I had. Well, as a matter of fact, I asked that Swedish lady, um, Olsen, uh, Greta, if it was bolted, and she said it was. How was it you could not see for yourself? I was already in bed, and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. What time was it when you asked her to do this for you? Oh, it must have been around 10.30 or 10.45 p.m. She'd come along to see if I had an aspirin. But instead of opening my door, she opened Mr. Ratchet's door by mistake. He said something quite rude, like, Not a chance, lady, you're too old. <laughs> it shocked her. She came in. I told her where to find the aspirin, and she got it out of my toiletry bag. <sighs> Poor girl, she didn't have a good night. The same could be said for Monsieur Ratchet. It appears Mademoiselle Olsen may be the last person to see Ratchet alive. Is this your handkerchief? No, not at all. Yet it is embroidered with an initial H, like your name. I don't care, it's not mine, and I would certainly never buy something so impractical as that frilly thing. Are you a smoker? No, definitely not. Filthy habit. I found a jacket button on your table. It looks like it belongs to A passenger on the train who may have entered your room. Miss Olsen was my only visitor. Besides the intruder, of course. But that doesn't look like a regular button, does it? No. It has the Orient Express logo engraved on it. I have not finished inspecting your room. If you don't mind... Let's see if Mrs. Rubard was telling the truth about the latch of the connecting door. This hook is probably where Mrs. Robard hung her toiletry bag. This hook is probably where Mrs. Robard hung her toiletry bag.
I can see the latch very well from here, even with the toiletry bag attached. I'll have to clear that up with Mrs. Avowed. Mrs. Avowed, you told me that the door connecting the two compartments was closed, correct? Yes, it was, as I told you. I was already in bed and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. That's why I asked Miss Olsen to check if it was closed. Are you sure everything you've told me is accurate, Madame Hubbard? Of course. I have an excellent memory. You said you couldn't see the latch from your bed, yet you had to get up from your bed to give Mademoiselle Olsen the aspirin. No. I stayed in bed and told her the aspirin was in my toiletry bag in the vanity. I did ask her to check if the latch between the compartments was closed. Mrs. Herbert, I tested putting your toiletry bag on the door hook as you told me. From your bed, you can easily see the latch on the door. The toiletry bag does not hide the latch at all. Are you saying I'm lying? It may have been stuck somehow in a different position. Or I may not have seen it in the darkness. Or I didn't think to look, you irritating man. Details matter, madame. A man has been most savagely murdered. You will excuse me if I attempt to separate the truth from the false. Forget my toiletry bag and focus on who entered my compartment. Probably after killing Mr. Ratchet. Madame Hubbard is a force to be reckoned with, but I suspect I'm not done with her. Thank you for your assistance, madame. 